everybody thank you thank you very much this has been one of many events this week where family and friends and colleagues of, of my father have wanted to remember uh, such a landmark anniversary of 25 years um, again I, I, I'm humbled at, at the face to see here today that I've seen all week people who who knew my father probably longer than I did uh, who worked with him and who had that experience of his professional life and one of the most iconic images of my father is of him coming through the gates that, that we're all standing at here today. So I think it's very fitting that we are here today. And, and again, I thank you for coming out on, on what is a horrible, windy, cold day. But again, it shows the reputation and the esteem that he's been held in and the values that he, that he has stood for in his life and in his death. And I thank you all for standing by us as a family. I, I'm delighted to introduce today um, Monsignor Raymond Murray, um, th th there's been a lot of kind words said about my father this week and what he stood for with regards to human rights. I think we don't need to look any further th than somebody like the man standing beside me who for decades um, has stood there and represented people and represented issues uh, when they have had nowhere else to turn. Um, so again, on behalf of my family, I'm, I'm very grateful and thankful that, that Raymond is here to speak with us today. Thank you. Thank you, John. What's in a name? In time, it absorbs the whole character and nature of the person. The name, Pat Finucan, reverberates in our hearts and minds, takes possession of us. His intelligence, his affection, his care, his nobility. And may I say that that name reverberates throughout the world? Yes. He made his name. He never failed to be troubled when tormented families made supplications to him regarding a dear one who suffered unjustly. And he carried their supplications not only in the files under his arm, but in his very being. He did everything in his power to seek justice and truth and from the day of his martyrdom, disciples followed in his footsteps. In his family led by Geraldine, in the Pat Finucane Centre, in Relatives for Justice, in the Committee of the Administration of Justice, in British Irish Watch, and indeed in many lawyers, many others at home and abroad. Sadly, his mother Kathleen died on the 12th of October 2013 she longed to see justice done for her son. Pat Finucane was murdered by members of the UDA on the 12th of February 1989 in his home at his family meal with Geraldine, his wife, his children, Catherine, John and Michael. Yes, Ken Barrett was sentenced to 22 years for his part in the murder. He served less than four years, having qualified for early release. William Stobie supplied the murder weapon. An agent of the security forces, he said he had informed the special branch contacts of the coming attack. De Silva reported in December 2012, he said, the real importance in my view is that a series of positive actions by employees of the state actively furthered and facilitated for Nukin's murder and that in the aftermath of the murder there was a relentless attempt to defeat the ends of justice. There is a paradox here. De Silva's review of the case, instead of a public inquiry, was an attempt to defeat the ends of justice. That relentless attempt continues, but we are gathered here today with members of the Fanukan family to repeat the call for an independent inquiry. We want to question not only those employees of the state who further who furthered and facilitated Pat's murder, but to question also their, employ their employers, the Minister of State. A few years ago, when I was standing here before, uh, I read a poem, I'm going to read it again, it's a personal one. The familiar 
side of Pat Fanukin with the files under his arms, swishing through the gates. Pat Fanukin's files. At midday, when the sun burned my face, I opened your bulging file, the red book of the sacrificial years, while the gunmen with their sour pistols watched me from the window panes. The invisible ink ran over the pages, staining my hands with the names of those who with eyes and ears and tongues once shared my human condition. The gone men moved away, the midday sun drew down the blind and left me in the dark. At dawn, when the sun climbed into my room, I pulled another file out of the sky. It was written in radiant blue ink, marked private. I read it. You didn't mind. There is life here, creation, glory and love. The blue-edged notes are tinged with family effects of affection. Each loved one an adorned capital embraced by silent gaps of unexpressed thoughts. Here and there I run my finger over the squiggles of gentle laughter. I loved it, Pat. I loved its peace. I loved the tinctured messages of bright illumination. A diary of fine days and blue flowers, scenting of sentimentality. Gurumila Mahatma.